you got to be optimistic. You have to be able to think the impossible. To be on the ball podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and the focus of Beyond the Ball is to ultimately help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So if this is your first time tuning in, you're in for a real treat. And I also want to encourage you that if you have not subscribed to the podcast, be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe there as well. But now with with all that out the way, all the preliminaries out the way, I'm excited for today's guest uh, because we have a gentleman who is who is the vice president of his SAC committee. So he's holding it down on the leadership front at his institution. In addition to that, he's currently uh, a Clemson Tiger out there getting it done on the gridiron. And last but not least, he was the 2019 recipient of the O.J. Brigant Award. Welcome into the stage and welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. None other than Mr. Taekwon Johnson. Taekwon, how you doing, my brother? I'm doing great in yourself, man. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. We finally got it right. It took about three times, but we got it right, man. Yeah, <sighs> definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I seen you over there laughing at me. Anyway, man, Taekwon, go ahead. Let, let the people know a little bit about you because I, I, I know I didn't hit it all because I know you got a lot going on, but Man, just just take just take it take a little bit of time and just share a little bit about yourself for those who might not uh, have have been introduced to you as of yet. Um, obviously, my name is uh, Taquan Johnson. I am from Baltimore, Maryland. I grew up around East Baltimore. Um, I go to school at Clemson University. My major is criminal justice, and my minor is nonprofit leadership. Some of the projects I have going on right now, obviously, as you introduced me, I just was elected as. Vice President for the Student Athlete Advisory Committee at Clemson University. We're working on programs and stuff of that nature to better our university as a whole, whether it's community service or equality rights. Um, some things that I have going on in my personal life, obviously I'm trying to start up my own nonprofit. That name is called Hope at the Harbor. You can follow that on Instagram and my podcast. Hopefully my first episode will come out August 2nd. So be looking for that. The podcast is called Over the Bean. We'll be talking about sports, name, image, and likeness, racial inequality, and how to better ourselves as a man and grow as a man. I'm also a cheer person of our program called Men of Culture here at Clemson. It's to get men out of the toxicness of being a man and allowing them to educate themselves on parameters of how to work in society as a man. Man, take what I didn't know you had all that going on, man. Man, busy trying to get things done. Graduation man. is rapidly approaching, so got to get it done before I walk out the door and start my career. Yeah, man, m- most definitely, most definitely. But with with you saying all that, like, I mean, I just want to ask you first, what is, what does leadership mean mean to you? Because I mean, with with you being vice president of SAC and just like you said, being being on the chair of of the of the other organization. Man, just just talk about that. Talk about leadership for a second. Well, leadership comes in all shapes and forms. Um, There's no particular way to describe it. You when you see a leader, you will see them because they will step with their best foot forward and they don't have to tell you that they're a leader. They're just going to go out and do what leaders do. Um, For me, it's someone that's committed to being excellent in all aspects of their lives, whether it's marriage, football, um, basketball, athletics, education, um, whether you're a police officer, whether you are a firefighter or a janitor, if you commit yourself to being ex- excellent or being 1% better than what you are yesterday, then you're going to have that leadership quality and that lion mindset. Man, yeah. So you consider yourself to have a lion mindset? I try to. I mean, obviously, none of us are perfect. But if we wake up with that mindset mindset every day, we do one thing, like make our bed in the morning that starts our day off right with one task, one task completed, already checking off a goal, complete one task, one t- simple task. And then you go forward about your day. And even if you have a bad day, guess what you get to come home to a perfectly made bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Man, I I love that. I, I I love that. So, what would you say? Because I'm 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 just really intrigued by what you shared earlier, just about how you're how you're leading and you know how you're in a position, ultimately in a position of service in in multiple roles, right? So, what what tip of our word of encouragement would you give to another student athlete, or or, or maybe just a student out there? Who's saying I, I don't have time to be more involved on campus? I don't have time to be involved in any organizations because you know I, I'm I'm taking all my time playing my sport. What what would you say to that individual? Um, obviously, time is a big issue when you play sports or are a committed and devoted student. Um, the biggest part is having time management for yourself and things that you want to do. If you have a passion to help people then you're going to make that time to help people. If you have a passion to work out, then you're going to make time to work out. If you have a passion to be the greatest basketball or the greatest football player out there, then you're going to make the time to do that. Um, And it's all about what you want to do. If you're going to do it, go set your mind out to do it. If you want to go do events on campus, mark it down in your calendar and don't book anything in that spot. Make it your purpose. Make it your passion. Make it something that you're committed to. Make it like if your mama call you, are you going to answer the phone if your mom call you? <laughs> Make it that important. Make it as if someone's about to offer you a million dollars if you go do this. Make it valuable to you. Make it personal. And that's attached to that leadership quality that we talked about earlier is if you want to do something and you plan on doing it, succeed at doing it, no matter what it is or whatever you want to do, go succeed at it. Why not? Why not succeed at it rather than I can't or I don't have time? Why not? Why can't I do this? Mm. This should be me. Okay, Taekwon. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Man. So, so would you say that you have a heart for people? Because I mean, you, you, you listed off two organizations, you, you listed off, uh, you know, the nonprofit. And then I, I I know, I know the podcast, you, 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 you know, you want to you want to get the podcast launched here, of course, after name, image and likeness comes out. So would you say you have a heart for people and where would you say that that quality came from? Um, yes, I definitely have a heart for people. Um, definitely people that are less fortunate and are not able to articulate things that they need. Um, it just is just something that I developed over time. Obviously, I don't have the most happy go lucky story. And I just feel as though giving back to the community allows others to learn from you and grow from you and give them hope. Our world is filled with negativity everywhere, politics, stuff that's going on in the media, the social media, it's it's all negative. We don't have that positive reinforcement. And I feel like if I do my 1%, if I make an impact on people's lives, everyday lives and be who I am, then that means someone else is going to go spread positivity in the world. My granddad always told me, ask someone how there's day going, smile at a person because you never know that person may be having the worst day ever. And by you asking how their day was or giving them a head nod or smiling, then you may have saved that person's life. You may have changed that person's entire day. And that's just where I've always tried to be at is to help people and to make them feel as if they're whole. Give them that one person, give them that wall or that rock to lean on. So let's just say we look into the future. Where do you see yourself in, in like in the future? I, I know with you being a, being a college athlete, I, I know it's easy just to assume that, you know, the NFL or something like that could be something that, that you aspire towards. But I but I want to ask you, like, where do you see yourself, you know, two, three years down, down the road? Like what what does what would you want to be doing? I would want to be um, obviously working my nonprofit, Hope at the Harbor. Um, I want to devote myself to helping communities get better. That's where I see myself is helping communities rebuild trust in between their political office, whether it's the governors, the commissioners, the Department of Public Safety, the police officers, creating a trustworthy system that's going to help us unite as a whole country is something that I see myself doing, whether I'm making a small impact or a large impact. And who knows, maybe I might run for president one day. Uh Oh, uh oh. so so tell us a little bit about Hope, Hope at the Harbor. Just just break the, break that down just just so that we understand, uh, you know, what, what, what you all do with at the nonprofit and, you know, who you all serve and support through that. 
So right now what we're looking for is a therapeutic rehab facility is the ultimate goal of Hope at the Harbor. We want to help fight the drug opioid crisis that's happening in the DMV across the whole um, East Coast. It's a very huge problem and it's putting people in their own mental prison. Um, I've dealt with that with my biological mother. She dealt with alcohol, drugs all her life. And I was that one positive reinforcement in her life that kept her alive for most of the years that she was living. And that's what I want to see other people do. And that's what I want Hope at the Harbor to be is a place where people will want to come and get the help that they need and want to get better and it's a process everything's going to be a process and that's where hope at the harbor comes in to make that process as tough and as hard as possible so that way you don't repeat the things that you've already been through so that way you don't get therapy and then just go back out on the streets and do everything that you just went through again we want to give you in-house therapy in-house cleansing in-house rehab in-house job training and then when you're done we want you to go to outpatient um homes where you can find jobs after we do job training these things will help you ultimately become a better citizen to yourself a better citizen to your kids a better citizen to your family and that's what we talk about at hope at the harbor all the time is how can we make ourselves better so that way once we do start taking cases we put our best foot forward have, have you always had this mindset because it seems like you have this optimistic and leadership focused or servant leadership driven mindset has, has this always been a thing for you or like talk, talk talk about that well it's it's developed i would say i developed over time to kind of have this mindset obviously with a lot of negative and positive things going on in my life you either are oh this happened to me so i'm not going to do this kind of guy or you're okay that you got to have that jocko mindset you got to have that jocko mindset oh my car got totaled good <laughs> hey good <laughs> You got to have that mindset in all seriousness, like in order to make it in this world, that's the mindset you got to have. I failed my math test. Good. I get to get better. <laughs> my wife cheated on me. Good. That tells me something about myself. Wow. I got into college. Good. I graduated. Good. You're the first in your college. Good. Don't stop working now. Keep mm. working. Good. Those that that's that kind of mindset that you got to live with. Um, Coach Sweeney is the one that brought that video to us of Jocko and his good video. You have adversity. Good. And we joke about it in our meeting and stuff like that. But in, in actuality, that's how it is in life. You have to be that way, because if you're negative all the time, then what are you going to get negative results? Mm. But if you're optimistic, your positivity, it's an active force against the negativity. That's just mm. how it is. And that's what I believe. If if you go into a situation thinking you're not going to do something, then nine times out of 10, you're not going to do it. <sighs> if you go in that situation, oh, I'm going to win vice president of SAC, what do you think you're going to do? You're going to swing that bat and hit a home run. If you're going to say, OK, I'm going to work every single day of my life to get into college academically, to be able to get into college athletically and have multiple choices across multiple schools. That's what you got to do. You got to be optimistic. You have to be able to think the impossible. Mm. People, people say, oh, you can't make it big without a college degree. Look at Steve Jobs. Hmm. Hmm. What what drives you to be this way? My granddad, when my granddad passed away in 2015, he taught me to never let yourself be pinned in a corner. And when I say that, never let yourself have one way in. You have to have multiple ways out. So mm -hmm. I can go into school academically or athletically. And while I'm here, I want to have multiple careers, multiple options. I want to have my pick of what I can and cannot do. If I want to go be a politician, 
then I can be a politician. If I want to go to law school, I'm going to go to law school, med school, whatever it is, veterinary, whatever it is, that's what you got to do. That's what you have to do. And he just instilled that in me from a very young age. I remember when I was young, my granddad had degrees plastered across his wall. And he said, always put your education first. Never let sports be your only way in and out. And that's just something that has stuck with me for a long time. That's why I go and make time for SAC. I go and make time to volunteer. I go and take time to wrap Christmas presents on Christmas Eve. You make the time for the things that are most important in your life. And my granddad was my most important person in my life. Wow. Wow. When your time is done on this earth, how do you, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as a servant to others, to be a rock for others. Um, that was kind of a loaded question. Not going to lie. Um, I never kind of really thought about that. But that's that's part of the things that I want to be remembered by a great personality, a standout guy, um, always go the extra mile for somebody that needed something. That's just something that I want to be recognized as someone that helps and that serves and that had a giving heart and that was always outgoing and positive. If I if it was to ask your teammates about you, what do you think they would say? Oh, I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I, I'm not sure about that one. Um, I just try to live my life in a way that people can judge me. I don't worry every single day about what my teammates think or what other people think. I believe if I'm going to prove something to somebody, that has to be myself. Has to be myself. I can't go and say, oh, I'm going to go bench 500 pounds and not believe that. I can tell whoever I want that. But until I believe that myself, then what's the point? So I don't, I don't go every single day thinking about, oh, my teammates think this about me. Oh, my teammates think that about me. Most of my teammates don't even know I won vice president for SAC or I'm nominated for a award because that's just not who I am. If I'm going to grind, I'm going to grind in silence. People shouldn't know you moved until you got them house keys and you walking into that door. People, people shouldn't know that you just got a brand new car until you're driving it around. People shouldn't know that you're out here grinding every single day, helping every single person that you possibly can until somebody comes and say, hey, dog, like I heard you've been doing this, that, and the third. But if every single day you're looking for accolades and, and people to say congratulations, then you're not living the right life. You're not. like You're out here trying to get approval from other people rather than approval from yourself. Approve and love who you are and grind to who you are and set a standard for yourself that other people can't match. That's just how it is. That's just what I what I live by. And if I'm gonna go help people, that's what I'm gonna do. So hope if my teammates listen to this, sorry guys, um, definitely would like your input when this comes out to <laughs> hear what you got to say about what I just said. So hopefully all positive things. Yeah, man. Yeah. So what you talking about setting the standard? I mean, I got I got to just ask you about Clemson football, because I mean, Clemson, Clemson I feel, has set a, a, a great standard. So I, I got to just ask you, like, what's it like being part of the culture of, of Clemson football? Oh, it's amazing. It's outstanding. Not just Clemson football, but the whole entire university itself is just amazing. We have an amazing head coach that respects us as players and respects our time as being a student. That's his number one thing is you're going to come here and you're going to graduate. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that he puts first is graduation. I think we have like a 93 percent graduation rate, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I think it is. Um, and he makes that personal because when he makes that personal and people that go to the league that hasn't graduated he writes some letters and says hey buddy i need your uh need you to walk across the stage for me like don't think you got away and that's something that he feels passionate about um but the culture here the culture is amazing great people coach winnie does a really good job at bringing great people into the program and it's unbelievable like every single person wants to win a championship um, they want to become a better man. They want a relationship with God. 
they want to graduate. You don't come into many programs where every single athlete wants to come in and graduate. You got programs that will put their kids in pointless classes. And when they're ready to go to the league, they have a bunch of hours of nothing. Not throwing shade at other programs, but it's, it's true. true. It's true. But I definitely believe Clemson does a really, really good job at making sure we come in and we have our mindsets right on academics first. We have a lot of things in place. We have this place called Neary that helps with our academics. We go to tutoring. We have tutoring appointments. We have tutoring hours and requirements that we have to reach each week. And that helps us set a standard where we can compete with Stanford and Duke academically when it comes to athletics and academics. And that's something that Coach Sweeney feels passionate about, and he doesn't budge on that at all. And he will let us know in a heartbeat when we're not doing the right thing in the classroom. <laughs> and then, then we have this program called Paul Journey. I'm actually a Paul Journey ambassador where we learn how to develop as a man develop professionally as a businessman and then develop to give him back to the community. Um, and then we have another program after we graduate that devotes our time to after we're at Clemson. Mm. And all of these things is setting us up to be 35, 45. Who is our 35 year old self? Who is our 45 year old self? And these are the things that we're learning as a freshman, as an 18 year old, some people 17 year old coming in and getting these meetings with the NFL, with Fortune 500 companies like Cisco, Bank of America or Apple or Facebook or Twitter. And you're getting hands on experience that the average person won't get. And Coach Winnie did a really good job at creating a program, a solid program that will hit all pillars of life, whether it's mm -hmm. religion, academic, athletics or the world. He set these pillars in a way that the only reason you should fail is if you let yourself fail. Wow. The standard. That's why y'all the standard. We try to be the best and we try to be the best at whatever we do. Man. Wow. I didn't know y'all had all that going on over there. That's impressive. That's impressive, Taekwon. Name, image, and likeness is buzzing around. Everybody's waiting for it to happen. Everybody's waiting for it to come down. So when when this name, image, and like likeness legislation does come down, like what what are, what are your plans for the for the future? Like like what would you like to see happen? Just just in regards for you know how you can leverage this name, image, and likeness thing. Um, I want to be able to reach a more bigger audience and have the ability to provide other things than what I can now. Like we have restrictions, we have limits to as far as what we can and cannot do. And I want to be able to help people in a way that money shouldn't be an issue. I should be able to reach people that want to donate to Hope at the Harbor and be like, hey, we have Johnny over here that needs books for school. And his mom's in our program. And at the moment, she can't afford books for Johnny to go to school. So if you could donate X, Y, and Z and partner with us, then we can get Johnny his books and his mom better treatment. And those are the things that I look forward to when aim, name, image, and likeness comes out. And just being able to be myself and promote myself in a way and own myself, that's a big part of name, image, and likeness is being able to own your name and own your image. And that's something big that athletes have fought for for a very long time is to be able to own ourselves like who doesn't own their self mm. if you go to a website and look up your last name i guarantee people already own your last name as a website as an athlete at least if you're a well-known athlete definitely and most people don't know this because they're behind the curve but fortunate we have programs where it's like okay well Let's type in your name and search .gov, .org, .edu and see what comes up. Who owns your name right now? Mm. So they teach us ways that, hey, go buy your name. Go put your name in a domain and create a way where you're already setting yourself up to own yourself, 
to use yourself as leverage. And name, image, and likeness is something that athletes have well-deserved for a long time. And there's not a lot of people that can argue with that. I think we made $55 million this year in revenue in a COVID year. And as an athlete, we understand this. We do it for the love of the game. But at the same time, we have families too. And we want to own our name. We want to own who we are. We want to own our authentic self and be able to use this to help others, especially on my part. Man, I, I never I never thought about it like that. You said own, to own yourself. Whew. Whew. Man, well, I, I, I will say this. I've, I've definitely enjoyed the dialogue today. Enjoy just just getting to see this side of you and just hear hear you just you know with without the helmet to to hear you without the noise but but just just to hear you and get to see you as as, as the person take one even though i know this is you know this is this is one one chat of many i'm sure we're going to continue to have but man i definitely de definitely am, am glad to have you on and, and and grateful for the opportunity well i'm thank you for allowing me to come on the show and be able to speak beyond the ball and allow people to see my authentic self um, I was talking to Anthony earlier um, about some other stuff, and he's like, man, you just got to allow your platform to see who you are outside of an athlete. And I think a lot of athletes have that issue is they only see themselves as athletes and they forget to allow to see their fan base, who they are outside of football. Are you a partier? Are you a giver? <laughs> stuff like that. Just allow people to see who you are. Like when we look at Patrick Mahomes or Travis Kelsey, like we see every aspect of who they are and people love it or they hate it. And for our audience to be able to see that, that should be amazing. And that should be something that people will want and want to fight for a little bit more is to allow people to see who they are, what they have upcoming, what they're planning. Like Darren Rencher, for instance, I love my boy Darren Rencher and he got to perform on a platform that a lot of people are really afraid too when they speak up about racial inequality. And Darren did a really good job, especially in Clemson and what Clemson is known for. He spoke up in a light that allowed athletes and non-athletes to see their true colors, to see their true selves and to see their meaning on campus. And that was just amazing. And he created a platform to allow other athletes to slingshot off of what he did. Mm. Man, that's 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 definitely special. That's 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 definitely special. But one 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 thing I was gonna say though, take one before I let you go. I gotta run you through. I gotta run you through. Everybody goes through it. I gotta take you through the two minute drill. Okay. And and the two minute drill, I'm gonna ask you a few rapid fire questions. Just give you the just give people the opportunity just to see another side of you. And it is it's, it's all gonna be fun. And we're gonna just get it rocking. Gonna get it rolling. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. No stuff in there. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go. Favorite food? Pizza. What what type of pizza? Meat lovers. Oh, my man, my man. What's the last book you read? Oh, man. Uh, whoo, it's been a while. Um, it was a book that Anthony gave to me. It was like, um, it's an athlete's book on name, image, and likeness. It was mm -hmm. about, I think it's called Building Your Brand or something like that. Oh, pro probably by uh, what's his name, Jeremy Darlow, more than likely somewhere around there. Okay, uh, what's what's the last podcast you? What's your what's your favorite podcast? Um, I don't really listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to the Jocko podcast. I listen to anything that involves Ray Lewis or Ed Reed. Um, I listen to a couple of other guys as well. Fair enough. Fair enough. What what's what's your go to Netflix show of preference to stream? Uh, I like Person of Interest. What was that about? Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, person of interest is kind of is a criminal justice kind of thing where they created a software program that monitors citizens that has predictive intelligence and that is supposed to prevent crime before happening. It's something it's called a big brother program. Um, they use it in prisons to predict the likelihood of someone committing a crime in a prison and they 
kind of section you off in that prison system based off of likelihood to commit um, violent acts, um, less likely what type of crime you commit to get in. That's what our government uses, our federal government uses, it's called predictive analytics to kind of create a safer space for prisoners going into prison. And that show kind of talks about that, but on basically on crack. Oh, wow. Okay, and then uh, last thing, what's, what's one tip that you want to leave for a student athlete? um chase your dreams never give up but definitely a road to get to where you want to go um you're going to have times where it's like i just want to give up and you have to push through like in all seriousness have to push through never give up on your dreams your dreams is the only thing that you have if you have a dream chase that dream and be what you want to be and don't let others control what you want to be be your authentic self be who you are that's something that when i grew up i i couldn't understand to be my authentic self don't let others tell you who you are don't let people shame you because you're dark or you're light skin or you're mixed or you're asian or you're white be who you are and stop worrying about what others think worry about who you are and how you view yourself learn to love yourself before others can love you that's a bar that's a bar and this is and it, this, this is a bonus question bonus question who who's who's one who's the next guest you would like to see me interview on beyond the ball oh uh, uh ray lewis oh man hey if, if i can get ray lewis i'll definitely take ray I, I would love to have ray lewis on here ray lewis makes you want to uh run through a brick wall just fyi <laughs> just everything he says he just makes you just want to run through a brick wall and go hit stick somebody off rip yeah 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 for sure for sure man saquon let everybody know where they can follow you how they can find you how they can stay connected with what you got coming up um you can follow me on my instagram um it's taquan underscore johnson um you can also follow my nonprofit. it's at hope at the harbor um um we also have an instagram page for our podcast coming out it's called over the bean um we'll be talking over a cup of coffee um I'm also on Clubhouse. My Clubhouse name is Taekwon Johnson. So I try to use every platform to give you all the best ability to to follow me and follow things that's upcoming. I know I haven't posted in a couple months, but that will start to change. I will become more active and I will allow you guys to see more of who I am and the things that I'm doing. Taekwon, my brother, I appreciate you stopping by and, and, and rocking with the ballers. Most definitely. Most definitely. Anytime. I love to chalk it up with you. My man. All the ballers out there listening and rocking, you all make sure to screenshot this if you're listening to the episode and, and shoot it to, to Taekwon, DM him and let him know what you took away from the episode. Because I don't know about y'all, but I feel inspired. He came in and he came in and snuck me with the inspiration. But make sure to check out the podcast and be sure to subscribe. If you're on Apple, subscribe and leave a rating review. You know, leave some feedback, leave some thoughts, leave some insight. I, I read all the reviews and I might shout you out. But once again, ballers, uh, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.